Hello everybody, today we're looking at a position from 2003 between Vladimir Kramnik with the white pieces and Veselin Topalov with the black pieces. Now most of you are familiar with these two players, so briefly, um, Kramnik was world champion and was basically the man to beat the man who at the time was Gary Kasparov in 2000, ending his 15 year reign as world champion. Um, he would go on to uh, defeat Topalov in 2006 to unify the World Chess Championship as Topalov was then the FIDE World Champion, which he had won in the um, tournament in 2005 in spectacular uh, fashion. Um, Topalov uh, was a you know, strong player in his own right and uh, at one time probably one of the... Uh, top two players uh, in the world so in this position in 2003 we can see that uh, black is in a bit of trouble here he's down material and um, his pawn on e6 is uh, being attacked um, by the way it's black's move so is this uh, Topalov's move and um, right here we must um, uh, realize that black is worse and that he should be trying to play for a draw here. So um, we have to assess this position and figure out uh, a plan, the best plan uh, for black here. Now, what I like to do in a position like this uh, to clarify uh, things is to basically try to think of what what does it look like for white to win or what are his best um, plans for winning? And what I see here is that White either has to promote the G pawn, right? He can win the E pawn outright and just have the F and G pawn that wins, or he can um, mate uh, Black, say it um, Black's king to the back rank somehow and uh, wind up mating him somehow. So now that I know these these are the ways that white uh, is most likely to win the game, if I'm black playing defense, I have to make sure that I don't allow any of these scenarios to happen at all costs. So as black, what do I want to do here? Well, I want to definitely stop the G-pawn because the G-pawn is uh, unopposed. So that's like my main uh, priority. Two... Um, I would definitely uh, not want my king cut off from the g-file, right? Because the pawn must be stopped. So I have to make sure my king is at least on an F or g-file, right? So that it's not cut off. I need to be able to pose the pawn. Um, say 2A would be to trade the F pawn for the E pawn if possible, right? It's not... Um, you know, it's not like the the um, major part of our plan, but if we if we can trade the F pawn for the E pawn, it definitely make our job easier as there's less material on the board. We definitely just don't want to drop the E pawn for nothing. I mean, that would just uh, uh, be tantamount to a resigning. And the third thing is we definitely uh, cannot get made it here. So with these three ideas in mind that white is trying to do either get mate uh, on black promote the g pawn or of course just win the f pawn outright let's see how Tupalov uh, attempts to draw this game so i'll show you how the game actually went and then i'll just i'll show you a few variations to illustrate those uh plans so in the game Tupalov, of course protected the pawn play king d6 and notice how he's creeping over to the king side because that pawn on the g file must be opposed kramnik played the natural move f4 topalov immediately uh, started counterplay with with rook a4 king f3 by kramnik and the idea is simply to um, play king g4 and of course his king is protected uh, from checks here. Topalov played the move king e7 again continuing on with the plan. Also notice he is avoiding the threat of f4 
F F4 to F5 because there's a pin right here. Okay, and again, if this move was allowed, um, white would just win the E pawn for nothing. And remember, that was one of the things that we said we can't allow. We can't just drop the pawn for nothing. If, if we can trade, that's okay. But just to drop the pawn for nothing is just tantamount to re resigning. So Topalov's move takes care of that threat of the F pawn advancing and also he continues with this idea of getting over to the king side. Rook g7 check. And king f8. Again, not just to be attacking the rook. Of course, he's not going to win the rook. The rook will just move. However, he moves to f8 again because he realizes he has to be on one of these files in order to oppose uh, these pawns. King, a move like king d8 or king e8, let's say king e8 for example, would not fall in line with the plan because again, Move like G6, for example, and uh, let's just make some random moves. Rook A1. Let's say Rook B7. And what are we going to do here? Let's say now he plays King F8. King G4. Rook to G1. Uh, King h5 looks good. Rook g2. And we can see the king just creeping up the board to support this pawn advance. Rook h2. Check. King g5. It's kind of like the only move. Rook g2. Now the king comes this way. And we can see in this particular variation. Let's just play rook, uh, rook g1. We can see in this particular variation that... Black just simply gets mated. The pawn is advanced too far, and he just gets uh, mated here. And this is, again, one of the variations or one of the ideas that I spoke about, that um, one of the ways that white could win. So I just wanted to show you the possibility uh, there. Okay. Black has to be very careful about letting um, the pawns uh, get advanced uh, too far in the position. So this is why going back here at the rook g7, Topalov plays the move king f8, right? He gains time, of course, and he moves over to oppose uh, the pawn. So rook b7 is played. Now, let's say white tried the same. Um, Well, we got to give, let's give, um, let's give black a move. So let's say black plays rook a1. And now let's say he did a silly move here, g6. Well, obviously there's no way to protect this pawn now. And you can see uh, the difference here. If he tries to go to g4 the king again the rook is in a nice place to start checking let's say king h5 right to to uh maneuvering with the king well black has counterplay rook rook f1 how do you protect that pawn if you come back you just risk uh, repeating the position so let's say if rook h4 uh excuse me rook b4 now to protect the pawn now the king is freed from the back rank King g7, and notice how, again, we are opposing the g-pawn. The f-pawn is here to stop this pawn. Okay, and the king can't make any progress either. And the game would, you know, would be uh, uh, drawn. So, 
So Rook after Rook B7, Topalov did not play this move Rook A1. Instead, he played the move Rook to C4. And this gave Kramnik time to advance his pawn. He played G6. Notice in our previous variation where the rook was on A1, the black rook, that is, was on A1. After G6, he could just swing here and attack this pawn. There was no way for white uh, to protect it. But after rook C4, there's really uh, no purpose to th this move as it kind of, it kind of wastes time. Uh, I've been looking at this position for a while, and this move is is uh, not really not not too good here and um so after g6 right kramnik just basically had a free move to do what he wants and so he advances the pawn so now things become dangerous uh for black here so rook c1 now but again timing is everything because now kramnik plays king g4 and notice say after rook g1 then the king can protect this pawn so Topalov plays rook c5 with the idea of keeping the king cut off here Kramnik finds a brilliant continuation and plays rook f7 so now black is uh, faced with the dilemma remember the idea that I spoke about earlier about this pawn advancing so black wants to stay stay in front of the pawn if he goes if he goes to um, uh, the E file, he gets cut off, and the pawn will eventually be able to promote. So, like for example, King E8. And let's say F5, for example. E takes. King g5 is one winning possibility. And let's say rook c1, king f6. And you can see the idea crystal clear here. Rook g1, g7, rook g2, and then rook a7. And there's nothing to stop this maneuver. Um, rook to a7 followed by uh, the queen here. And notice it's because the king is cut off here. So that's what happens on king uh, e8 so on king g8 the problem with this move is now black runs into the second half of the dilemma here which is rook f6 and remember I said you can't just drop this pawn because now white will have two pawns for nothing so how do you protect that pawn with the king over here so all you can do now is play rook c6 the problem with rook c6 is it gives up the blockade of the fifth rank and then the king can just slide through king g5 and let's again throw in some randomness rook c5 check king h6 rook c7 again right protecting the pawn g7 and now you have the third scenario that i brought up which is mate Black is now threatened with mate. There's really no way to, to deal with it. Again, like rook c8 to stop the mate threat. And then you drop the pawn and this is going to lose. Okay, so you can see with those two uh, losing continuations uh, that Tupalov was faced with, um, he you can see that he was in a, a lost position. So what he chose in the in his game, he didn't go a G8. I'm sure he saw that continuation. Instead, he went with E8. And after E8, Kramnik, uh, he went King E8. And after uh, King E8, Kramnik played F5 and uh, Tupalov resigned here. Why did he resign? Well, if he takes here, he takes F5. Then just simply rook takes f5, and then we have this scenario where the king is cut off here. So 
if rook takes king takes and then you have a simple king and pawn end game where uh white will get the opposition for example if king f8 then just simple uh king f6 here and g7 and then the, the king gets squeezed out that's just one example so um black is totally lost in that king and pawn end game so therefore his only other choice would be to try to preserve the uh, the rooks, keep the rooks on the board, and but then you have a lost ending here because the king is cut off, and this is again one of the scenarios that we mentioned that we can't allow the g pawn being passed and the king cut off of the um, of the f file. So for example, king g5 here. Let's say king e7, g7, rook g1 check. King h6. Uh, what do you want to do? King e6 here. Let's just bring this guy back. Rook f2. Rook h1. King g6. Rook g1. King h7. And King g8 with the idea of just of course squeezing out right here so the king let's say the king drops back rook e2 check and let's say the king decides to stay next to the pawn then you could just simply play a move like that and there's no stopping this from happening let's say um, let's go back Instead of king f6, the king decides to say go to d7. Then you have the king cut off by two files, and then you can set up your classic, uh, you know, chain of uh, position. Let's just say rook g1, king f7, rook f1. It's coming to G6. G1. I like playing around with this F6. Uh, rook F1. And there you go. Your classic uh, Lucena position. Rook G1. Rook G4. And then this, this guy is going to uh, go home. And that is why uh, Topolov had resigned after um, after this move, after King E8 and F5, because he would go into uh, this uh, totally lost um, King and Pawn endgame, or uh, the Rook endgame would be lost also, because he he uh, fell into one of the three scenarios. Like I said, it either was going to be mate. The G pawn, uh, the G pawn is passed, can be stopped, or he gets he gets cut off uh, from the uh, file. So, so, the final question we have to ask here is what what did he do wrong? And what he did wrong uh, here was, is Topolov played this move right here, Rook C4. This was this was the losing move. Um, and the reason why is it be because it gave uh, Kramnik this extra tempo to advance this pawn and then uh, bring his king uh, behind generating threats. Once the threats were generated, forced um, uh, Kramnik into a dilemma where he had to move his king either away from the pawn, allowing one of the scenarios whereby he was cut off from the file and the uh, pawn could promote, or if he moved toward the pawn and opposed it, then he would have been uh, eventually involved in like a mating uh, situation, right? And that was because the pawn was allowed to advance to a g6. So this one move right here uh, by Topalov uh, uh, caused his downfall. Again, the correct move here is rook a1, or he could even he could even check here also. You could play like uh, rook um, a3 check. All right, 
I'm not losing the tempo here and let's say let's say he does g4 anyway and here rook a4 is very powerful the reason why it works here is because again look at the opposition and then you're threatening this move right similar to what we had earlier where you're exploiting uh, the pin and again if you can trade off these pawns this is good and notice the position of the king here you're not cut off so if you trade these if you trade the e and, uh, and the f pawn the king can easily come here and um you know pose this pawn and then you have like a you can set up a um a, a philidor's position where the rook would come down here and you just you would um you would check from behind once the king uh passes the uh tries to pass to the uh, sixth rank so again that would take some knowledge of uh, some uh, simple end games but um that would uh draw easily um for uh black hair so again his little variation here for you see how the king just just goes right in front of the pawn it's, it's no not a problem and of course this pawn is going to get traded off so let's say he just goes there let's just play e takes let's threaten mate of course rook a6 And let's just give up the pawn because I just wanted to show you that black just draws easily in this type of position. And you can just check from from the uh, from the back rank uh, all day. There's really nothing that um, that white can do. And this is like classic uh, strategy in the uh, Philidor's um, uh, rook and pawn endgame. Right, the king is perfectly fine on the back rank because the rook needs to be um, needs assistance. Right, the rook can't check and protect the pawn at the same time. That means the king is needed to um, provide the assistance. But since the board is wide open, the rook and, and the rook is far away. The rook can keep harassing and checking, and um, black can uh, white can never make any progress. So that's. Um, that's definitely a, a end game that you should study if you're not familiar with the uh, Philidor position. Because sometimes from positions like this, you can simply trans transition to known um, draws, known end game. So I'm sure Topalov was familiar is familiar with the Philidor position, but um, you know, just under pressure of the um, the game, somewhere he mis uh, miscalculated. Again, I tried to figure, I tried to find this idea. Because up to here he plays he plays good the strategy is sound but some somehow he threw this move in here rook c4 and I'm not quite I, and I, I'm not quite sure why he did it the only reason why I think that he did it is is perhaps he didn't take g6 serious enough and he figured on this move of course he could just play e5 and have it you know um, easy draw. Because I can't think of what responses that he uh, expected from Kramnik here. Because obviously Kramnik wouldn't play this move. And so he must have thought that G6 wasn't uh, wasn't that serious here. And like again by the time this is played he's, he's lost. Because it doesn't matter where the king moves. Um, he's going to fall into one of those uh, scenarios uh, that forces the win for white. So anyway, that is it for today's uh, video. Uh, I looked at this end game for a long time, so I hope you appreciate uh, the analysis. And um, I hope I was able to get across, uh, you know, the understanding, you know, what was going on in this end game. And hopefully uh, you can take that and apply it to. Uh, your chess or you know uh, most importantly the way of uh, uh, thinking and analyzing is is very important not so much the moves but it's like the way you should be thinking and evaluating uh, positions so if you have any questions just um, message me uh, or leave a comment below please check the links below I have some uh, DVDs related 
to the end game that you might be interested in and also please donate to my channel if these videos are helpful to you and um also i am on live chess the same uh name is my youtube channel chess audiobooks so if you want to play um uh, some one minute speed games sometimes um you can get me there and also on twitter the same name is my youtube channel chess audiobooks um and I, you know, I'm on there also. Uh, so, anyway, I'll see you on the next video, and enjoy your evening.